Today's Mission Sunday, and uh, it's a, the Sunday that we specifically remember to pray for the success of conversion of souls all throughout the world, especially those who in far off lands that that uh, that do not have possession of the faith. And really, when we think of the missions, we oftentimes really think of things like Father, the work that Father Nkomoke does in Nigeria and the trip Bishop Dolan just came back from, from the Philippines. And in a lesser degree, it's also thought of the domestic missions that we have here, especially today with, with the idea of uh, that there not being so uh, few mass, masses available all around that, that it necessitates priests to travel far and wide. And people ask me all the time about mission trips and what it means to, to continually go on, on the missions and work on those things and, and to hear stories of them. So I want to tell you one story today about from one of my trips. But it's a story that you would think, at least on face value, wouldn't be considered necessarily a success story. There's a story that happened to me maybe about three or four months ago um, when I was traveling down to, to Dallas, Texas. And I was on the flight and you know, flying, flying down there, early morning flight. And as I was there, um, I was I, you know, I had plenty of time for prayer, so I pulled out my rosary at a certain point, and I began to pray the rosary along the way. Well, as my flight was at like six in the morning, I was praying the rosary for a while, and I kind of fell asleep. And as I was sleeping, I was abruptly woken up by the woman that was sitting next to me. She tapped me on the shoulder, woke me up from a dead sleep. And asked me, is that a rosary that you have in your hand? Well, I was kind of excited about that. I thought, oh, good, okay, that's a good question. Yes, yes, it is the rosary in my hand. And the lady then proceeded to go immediately into a stage of berating me and trying to question why I was doing the rosary. She said to me, first off, where do you find the rosary in the scriptures? Well, I was not necessarily ready to get into this type of discussion out of my sleep. And so as I tried to dust the cobwebs off my brain, I started to tell her that, well, the rosary per se, you're not going to find in the scriptures. But the prayers of it, you will find that. You will find the Our Father. You'll find most of the pieces of the Hail Mary. You'll find the information contained in the creed. And so really, it, you'll find all of the mysteries that are there. They're all very scriptural. And so, while it as itself is not perhaps from the scriptures, we draw from the scriptures for all of it. But soon, I began to realize that she was not one inquiring in good faith, but rather simply being antagonistic. And so she began to ask other various Protestant type of attack questions against the rosary and the Catholic faith and uh, after a little while, I realized this is a really fruitless argument. And so I told her, you know, don't, I'm going to go back to saying my prayers now, and I'll pray for you in the rosary for, the, for your spiritual well-being. Well, that left her quiet for a little while, but she couldn't leave it alone. That was just too much for her. And so as we came closer to the landing, she then said to me, that I needed to read, and then pulled out some sort of random scripture verse, and that I needed to go home, and I needed to read that, that scripture verse. And the verse was just simply something about praying to God. Uh, I, I did actually read it later on. And, and I said, okay, well, if you're giving scripture homework, it's only fair that I give you some. I said, so go home and read the sixth chapter of St. John. It talks all about the Holy Eucharist and receiving the body and blood of Christ. And in there, that's how, part of what is necessary for us to save our souls. And uh, she then mockingly cast off St. John 6 chapter. Oh, St. John, John 6, you guys always quote that. Who, you know, who really bothers by that? And then she says, you need to, she very derogatorily looks at me and says, listen, Sonny, you just need to listen to Granny. Granny's always right. Just listen to Granny. Well, my response was, ma'am, I do listen to Granny. My grandmother 
she converted back to the faith after a long time away. And then she became devoted to her daily rosary, and she died fortified by all the sacraments of the church. So yes, I listen to Granny, because she does know what is best. And then I said, and I promise you, I will pray for you again in the rosary. And that was the last that she talked to me. Now from the outside, that looks like a failure, because she went away angry and proud and, and more fortified in her righteousness of, of her error. But in reality, that's so oftentimes what it means to be a mission missionary in today's world. Now, I don't mean that as a priest going down to bring the sacraments to people and traveling far and wide. But I mean for each and every one of you. We're all called to be missionaries in this lifetime. And it always comes to us when we least expect it. So oftentimes, it's asked to me, of what do I do? What can I do to best convert souls, best convince my family that this is the correct position for us to have, the correct faith for us to have, or best convince my friend, or that my child has fallen away, or whatever myriad of things that come up. How do I best convince them? of what they need to do. What, show me the article. Show me something I can point to them and, and explain to them how this is done. And all of that's important. And all of that's very good. We should be zealous to work and help others understand when they are truly ignorant. But all of the explanation in the world doesn't do any good if, if a soul is closed off. Because grace is also necessary for conversion. And the most important aspect of conversion, the best tool that you have, is not going to be found in an internet article or in a book, but rather it sits right in your pocket at this moment in time. It's the reason why we have the October devotions to the rosary, why the month is entirely devoted to it. Because there, that rosary that you have, that daily prayer that you offer, <clears throat> is your strongest link to truth itself. Because in that, is the key to the treasury of graces. In that devotion to the rosary, I can be successful with explanations. I can help souls be saved. That woman who contacted me on the plane, she was sitting next to me. It was an opportunity for her. It was, she did inquire about it. But nothing in that moment suggested that she was even remotely interested in hearing any explanation or any proof of truth. She was set in her own ways. She was set in her own preconceived conclusions and set in her own life. Yet the only response that was appropriate to have is to turn back and continue to pray. I don't know what will happen to that lady. I'll never see her again. But I know, do know that God will give her graces because I pray, not because I'm anything special, but because he's given us the tool to be able to do good for souls. Because it's in those moments when everything seems so hopeless that souls will see the light more clearly in the darkness. It's in those times when we think nothing of a natural realm can solve this problem that the solution has to be something supernatural. The rosary is just that. It has been that way since the very beginning. Today, when you talk to people who have converted to the true faith, you will find the one constant in all of their varying stories is going to be, and then I started to pray the rosary every day, and etc. They find themselves here. Or, Conversely, throughout the centuries, you see again and again that the rosary was the great tool for the good of souls. Our Lady at Fatima, what did she ask for more than anything else in the recitation of the rosary? Our Lady, all the way back at the very start of it, when she gave it to St. Dominic, told him that this was going to be a great use, a great tool for the salvation of souls. St. Dominic, one of the, the most educated and most pious men in the church. He was there, he went to Toulouse, and he preached there for three days, 
to no success at all. The entire town of city of Toulouse was completely overtaken by Alvin Jensen. So what did he do? He went out, he prayed in the woods, and then Our Lady appeared to him and told him, go preach my psalter. Go tell them about the rosary, introduce this to them, and preach that, and you'll gain souls. He went back in there. Same man, same truth, and he just simply presented them with a devotion. The entire city was converted to the faith that day. So if you think that your prayers are just some sort of small piece of the puzzle, if you think that your prayers aren't enough to do good for souls, if you think that your simple quiet rosary is only something that, yeah, that's great, Father, but what else can I do? And your focus is turned around. Pray first, and then look to what else might be applicable afterwards. But oftentimes, it will be simply the prayer, and that is all that you have to do in the way of good. But never discount it as something small. Today is Mission Sunday. Today we are reminded of all the great saints who traveled all throughout the world, who oftentimes were persecuted and even put to death for their mission work to pagan nations. Yet one person comes down to us as a striking contrast to that as a patron of mission. St. Therese of Lisieux, she never left the convent. It did so much good for souls because she prayed for them constantly. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.